where exactly you store the products mm. in warehouse bins where exactly you store bins. the products bins on mar de bins let's go by sequence how bins will be identified storage type storage, storage type. types storage types what is storage types different sections for certain kind of products different sections for the different product. kind of materials all right example you went to metro or reliance stands or more we are going went to the clothing section now we have went to the clothing section so clothing if you go can you see all type of clothing in only one place or else different different uh, place you can see men's wear you can see in different uh, different side the ladies wear will be different side the kids wear will be different side and also in clothing only you will have some kind of different things will be there that will be different side so why we are separating clothing just for clothing why we are separating separate separate areas for diff different different things why what is the requirement for easy accessibility for easy access to the users yes now if you are speaking about the warehouse we are speaking about the warehouse let me go into first metro I am watching exact pictures. I just So these are the warehouse. This is very important. Like okay? storage types are very important. So this is the warehouse inside and the warehouse outside. Okay. Now in the middle we have storage types. 
In the way rows, we have storage types. Just think that this is the one of the storage type. Instead of creating blocks, I am copy pasting this one, okay? Electronics. This was not shown here. Fine. So just think that in the way rows, when you when you enter, when you enter inside of the way rows, you are able to see these sections. Okay, I mean to say these are the storage types where exactly you store the clothing into one area, electronics into one area, sometimes of liquid fluids. Okay, into one area. So the way rows inside. The various outside. We are storing the ports into different different areas for the easy accessibility for the users who is placing the goods in the right area and for the users to pick the goods easily and to check out. Even if you go to Reliance Trends or more. All vegetables will keep in one place. All clothing will be in one place. Small clothing is into and other requirements into one place. Even it is some liquid types, all liquids into one place. Okay, means what? Uh, with respect to the product, with respect to the product, they'll keep it in one place only. That product. If you go to more, observe, if you observe them more carefully. If you have uh, 10 types of tomatoes are there in more, just think that there are 10, 10 types of tomatoes they are selling. All 10 types, it will be in the same place only. If you observe carefully, you will not find in different different places. You will find in only one place that is uh, tomatoes. You will find tomatoes in only one yeah. place. You will not place in different different areas. Indeed. Just for the easy accessibility for the user who is placing the goods there and for the customer who is, who is picking the goods for the for their own purpose okay now we'll discuss more okay before we discuss from the various types we should start with various task so you know Number ranges in EWM. Let's come back to storage types after 20 minutes. Number ranges. What are number ranges first of all? The 
number ranges what are number ranges number ranges are the specific uh, number intervals that has been uh, given to specific materials mm -hmm. only materials no for vendor uh, vendor also vendor also for documents uh, vendor yeah po uh, inbound delivery outbound delivery mm -hmm. good so whatever the you create in ecc or what are you create in sap first of all okay whatever you do some kind of number will generate it can be transaction data it can be master data okay whatever you do in these two things master data transaction data whatever you do numbers will generate define number ranges can you see so yesterday's class we configured the warehouse number rkw in today's class we are going to define the number ranges in my warehouse in my warehouse i am defining number ranges guys in my warehouse first thing once i click on number ranges define number ranges I got all these options. Go on mute, guys, if you're not speaking. Once I click on number ranges, I got all these options. First option I can see is like define number ranges for various tasks and various documents. Define number ranges for various tasks and various documents. You want to tell me what is various task and what is various document? Uh, various task is that where it helps to uh, do the movement uh, of goods between the warehouse. It will create one task according to that. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. The storekeeper or the user will uh, move the uh, Mm -hmm. Vision, right? Like uh, they need to do again some uh, task or document, correct? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they will against that doc against that document or task. They will do. They will perform their activity. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is good. Warehouse task. Read from right to left side, guys. Warehouse task. Task in the warehouse. Task. What is task, guys? Some kind of action, right? Some kind of work that assigned to you, a task assigned to you, right? Varos task. Varos task. A task in the Varos that you need to perform. Okay. I'm giving one task to you. I'm giving one task to you. Which it means like, you to learn AWM course. Example, I'm telling. I'm giving a task for you to learn the AWM course. It's one task outside for you. I'm giving a small task. And a daily wage worker, they are giving some task. Today, you need to build these four blocks or one block, the constructor. They're giving it as to that employee. You need to build these two walls. And in the home, if you are painting, you need to build, you need to complete the painting for two walls. It's a task for him. So each and everything we have a task. In the warehouse, there are many people working, right? In the warehouse, there are many people working. One person will be placing goods inside the warehouse. One person will be taking goods. He will ship to the customer. 
okay inside only they will move to quality okay inside only they will repacking the goods inside they will label the goods they will do lot, lot of things right inside the warehouse daily things each and everything they will do by their own okay I, I need to do this one will they do by their own own thinking no no right system will create one task for each and every person system will create like, uh, task specific, for... specific uh, instructions will be given to them yeah it can be anything okay instructions means what place this material in this place example here if you see Now, just think this is a warehouse. This is a metro warehouse. I'm sorry. This is the metro warehouse. Now, this is the staging area. I got one cloth or a shirt. I got a shirt. Okay, just think I got a shirt. From the vendor. Take some electronics for So, just think that this is the phone I am receiving from the vendor. I'm receiving from the vendor. This is the phone. Now, this phone will be received to where guys first of all? Without warehouse task. This phone will be received to where? Staging area. Okay. On base of what? On base of what the vendor will ship the goods to here? Inbound delivery. Inbound delivery. What is inbound delivery? In this case, we are discussing about the various tasks and various documents. What is inbound delivery here? The information document uh, how much uh, product that vendor is shipping to. Their voice is very low. I don't know. It's my issue or your issue. But the information, docu information document that how much product we are receiving. Confirmation documents. That we are discussing about uh, discussing on inborn every part only that is ASN and all. But warehouse document, what is warehouse document? Uh, what is a warehouse document and what is warehouse task? Transactional data in warehouse is a warehouse document. Mm -hmm. Now you told inbound delivery. Inbound delivery where ECC or AWM? It is done in ECC. Hmm? ECC system. ECC. So in AWM we don't have inbound delivery. We have, I guess. Mm -hmm. We'll have we'll
So you are going to receive this product to EWM system, right? Mm. So without delivery, will you receive to EWM? No. Without delivery in EWM, how will you receive? How do you perform GR? How do you perform all the things? So you will not be having delivery. You will be having delivery, right? Yes, yes. So ECC also have inbound delivery. EWM also have inbound delivery. System automatically creates based on this delivery. System automatically creates delivery in the EWM system, right? So that is called warehouse document. Inbound delivery or outbound delivery, whatever it may be. Okay, document it is creating a reference document. A reference document for the PO. A reference document for the uh, sales order. Means what? If you are receiving the goods, it's inbound delivery. If you are shipping the goods, it's outbound delivery. For everything, it is having a delivery in the EWM system. Delivery in the EWM system. Delivery number. And just think that you received phone based on the delivery number. In the delivery, you have all these products maintained to receive these products from the vendor. So vendor shipped the goods to the warehouse. Now, a resource is there. Okay, what is resource? Resource. Resource is what anything. Is a resource? Uh, resource, is anything uh, resource is anything. Resource is anything which we will use to move the uh, that uh, materials hmm. inside the warehouse to keep it in hmm. the particular place. Okay, that was good. Resource. What is resource, guys? Resource. By seeing the naming convention, we will understand 50% here. Resource. A source. A source to pick this. A source to for a source in the warehouse that you do the activities. That will perform the activities. A source in the warehouse. Let me take some resources. I am discussing more is like is very important, okay, and basics. So we have manual resource Observe carefully guys here. Now here there are two resources are there here. There are two resources are there here. One resource is like a person who is picking the goods from staging area and is keeping the goods in the respective area. It can be any area. This area or this area or this area. He is going to keep the goods in the respective area. So this is resource is a, a manual resource. And if you see this one more resource called forklift. There is one more resource called forklift. And here we are calling entire one is forklift. 
we are not calling manual and forklift. We are calling entire this part is called forklift. That's it. Now this forklift will come for what type of goods it will come forklift will be. If you are receiving a phone box, entire box, big box you are receiving, not small box. You are receiving a big pallet you are receiving, phone pallet. Which will weigh some 500 kgs or 1000 kgs. You are receiving a free pallet of phones. In that case, a man, a man can uh, take with his hands all the full pallet. He can carry the full pallet. No, he can't. He can't, he right? Can. If you're receiving a single product or single box that is very small, which he can carry, he'll carry that uh, product to the respective location. But in case, if he, if he receives the same product in big box called as pallet, that pallet, he cannot pick it. He cannot hold it. Now, automatically system assigns, system will call this results called as forklift. This forklift, forklift will come here and it will take the pilot and it will take you to the respective location and it will place the goods in the respective area. So these are called resources guys generally. These are called resources. There are a lot of resources will be there like a crane in the warehouse, automatic guided vehicles in the warehouse. Okay, like that there are a lot of resources will be there in the warehouse. That always depends on the warehouse. How many they are using, but these two are common. Manually they will be working, and forklift also will be working. Now tell me, this phone should be keeping in this area. This person, this person, just in the only one phone you received. This person, this person should keep this phone here. What is required for him now? Uh, task should be created. A Vero's task is required now. This person cannot keep this phone from here to here. It's not up to him. System should create a Vero's task to this person. System should create a Vero's task for this person. Okay, you go and take this phone and keep this okay, keep this phone here. System will tell that this person first of all will create a Vero's task. So we, we will see this Vero's task, you know, uh, in the next classes and all. What Vero's task information it will be there? Vero's task. So we get one number in this case. What number? Like just think is something. Uh, this is a Vero's task number. What this number is telling? This number is telling that resource. Is telling the resource. Resource number. Resource. You pick the product. Pick the product. Which product? Phone. Right. You pick the product. From where? System will tell where also. You pick this product from staging area. Staging area will be having some names. Names means STG1. Because a lot of staging areas will be there. We should define. For each staging area, we should define 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, whatever it may be. We should define the staging areas because in Veros, lot of staging areas will be there. Not only single staging area, right? In this case, one staging area. What I can do? Sorry. There are different staging areas will be there. This is like one more staging area. This is like one more staging area. So this I am calling as one. This is two and this is three staging areas. Now in this case, I am asking the user. The system is creating a various task to this resource. It is telling that go to this area. OK, and pick this product. Pick this product. Go in the staging area, pick this product and Place in where? 